Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today we need to look at the first cards revealed from Crimson Haze. Yesterday I made a video about Crimson Haze being revealed. But we didn't have any cards. And I told you that there would be cards today. And I told you that when there were cards today, I would come back and I would share them with you. I'm nice like that. Well, the good news is we have cards. And it does include, exactly as predicted, Blood Moon Ursa Luna EX. And to be fair, right, it's on the front of the booster pack. Obviously, that was going to get an EX. But it is, as predicted... A basic Pokemon. Now, I thought this was honestly a pretty easy prediction. So I'm not going to pat myself on the back too much for this one. But the fact of the matter is that Ursa Luna is a stage 2. We've only actually had one stage 2 Ursa Luna, but we have had one. And here, Blood Moon Ursa Luna is a basic. And the reason essentially is, although Blood Moon Ursa Luna is a version of Ursa Luna, it can't be evolved. From Ursaring. Well, as you're playing the games, you're not going to be evolving it up into a stage two. So it made sense that it was going to be a basic. It's a bit weird. It's a bit special. It's a little bit confusing. But hopefully this all makes a little bit of sense. Sounds good. Excellent. And obviously we know at this stage that Ursa Luna could have been fighting or colorless. We get ourselves colorless. Now, before we get onto the card properly, I need to show you the special illustration rare. Which is absolutely beautiful. And also super weird, but only specifically for me. And the reason it's weird for me, I have a son Ruben, he's two next month. He's very almost two, like 25 days. And because I have a Munchlax sitting cutie that I picked up at a Pokemon Sleep event, he's been carrying that around lately. He's obsessed with Munchlax. Munchlax is his favorite. He's not probably talking yet, but you better believe he can say Munchlax. And where's Munchlax? And I love Munchlax and things along those lines. And the only Pokemon here, you've got obviously your Ursa Luna. You've got a bunch of Teddy Ursa. There's a bunch of Cutie Fly and then a Munchlax. Why is there a random Munchlax on this card, which is shown to me like a week after my infant son suddenly gets obsessed with Munchlax? Bit weird. I love it. And I really want this card. What does it actually do? Well, I've done the translations myself. Although, as always, I have checked with the lovely Antoine Boulet to make sure I've not done anything silly. And this is a pretty good card. We've got an ability here that says that the cost of this Pokemon's Blood Moon attack is reduced by one for each prize card your opponent has already taken. Now, very, very, very important to note, it does not reduce the cost of this Pokemon's attacks, like, for instance, Radiant Charizard. It specifically reduces the cost of the attack Blood Moon, which is really important for Crisis Call, and honestly seems kind of deliberate. Because if it reduces the cost of its attacks, like Charizard, then when your opponent's down to one prize remaining, you can actually then use Crisis Call for free. Do 280, which is more than you do on your regular attack. Doesn't work. It only reduces the cost of the Blood Moon attack. That's very important. But the Blood Moon attack itself, 5 energy, 240, and this Pokemon can't attack next turn. But look, we've been doing this for years at this point. It doesn't matter. The whole can't attack next turn doesn't matter. You switch in and out. We, we've seen this on a million Pokemon. Nobody cares. So, early game, this is kind of annoying 5 energy attack. But by the time your opponent's taken a couple of prizes, it's a free energy attack. By the time they've taken three prizes, use it for a double turbo. When they've taken four prizes, use it for a single basic energy. And then by the time they've taken five prizes, i.e. they've got one left to win the game, you're hitting 240 for zero energy. And I've got to remind you at this stage, Path to the Peak is rotating out. And there's other ability lock out there, don't get me wrong. But Path to the Peak is what a lot of people would be using here because it's just a stadium you can play down and then boom, this ability turns off. Not the case here. Just kind of pointing that out. 
So I'm not loving it as an early game Pokemon. And the fact that it's colorless, not fighting, is actually kind of annoying because you're never hitting for weakness. And there are relevant, you know, fighting basically is weakness on lightning Pokemon, colorless Pokemon, and some darkness, the ones that were poisoned in the game. So obviously being able here to be a fighting type would be great. Colorless hits nothing for weakness. And it is expensive in the early game. But it's a colorless Pokemon that gets cheaper and cheaper as you go through the game and ends up being, you know, two energy. Well, if you use double turbo, it's 220, which honestly is enough to get a lot. It's basically every Pokemon V and under. Not all basic EXs, but a lot of them. Super relevant number. And then, you know, late game, it's 240 for zero energy. Literally zero energy, 240. And it's a colorless Pokemon that can be teched into any deck whatsoever and it's one space in your deck. Not to mention the fact that, you know, it's got 260 HP, so against a non-fighting. And you know what? Yeah. I'm giving this thing four and five Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. My initial reaction here isn't that you're building around this. You're not making a Blood Moon Ursaluna deck. What you're doing is putting this as a one-off in a bunch of different decks so you can hit 240 for zero energy in the late game. That's really very good. Having an easily surged basic Pokemon that you can you attack with for free in the late game is kind of busted. Also, as a side note, before we get to the other two EXs, because there are two more EXs to talk about, it's kind of, and I know this is consistent with the video games. I understand it's consistent with the video games. However, it's, it's called Earth, Luna, Blood Moon, except it's Akatsuki, which is Red Moon. So they've written Blood Moon as literally Red Moon using Japanese hiragana. That's fine. But the attack is just the word Blood Moon written in katakana. That's really annoyingly inconsistent. Speaking of annoying, Scream Tales getting an EX. My daughter actually is obsessed with Jigglypuff lately. I haven't shown her Scream Tale yet. Maybe today's the day. And look, there's a lot of things working against Scream Tale. 190 HP is low. Free energy, 120 discarded energy from your opponent's active. I'm going to be honest with you. It's a little bit eh. You're not really doing enough damage. If you're hitting weakness, you will get basic EXs and Pokemon V, but that's about it. And discarding one energy is fine, but it's not exactly great. And yes, it's an ancient Pokemon, so sure, you can use Professor Sada's Vitality here to essentially attach an energy and then maybe you use double turbo energy and do 100 turn one going second like th th there are ways to get this going quite quickly i just don't think the attack's good enough and i think the hp is low i love the first attack the first attack makes me very happy now again we're talking basic pokemon you got single colorless energy so super easy to use and you can only use the attack if you go second and you can only use it on your first turn. But during your opponent's next turn, they can't play any supporter cards from their hand. So basically, your opponent gets a turn, but without supporters and without attacks, because they're going first. Then you get a turn, and you get to use whatever cards you want. And instead of using a proper attack, you use this, and then your opponent shut off from supporter cards. So then your opponent gets another turn, and now they are allowed to attack, but they're not allowed to use supporter cards. And then on your second turn, you're trying to launch a big attack to either win the game or cripple their setup. You're basically betting on the fact that your opponent isn't going to be able to get set up without a supporter. And then you've essentially had two turns to get set up without your opponent being able to use a supporter. Because you've had turns two and four where you're allowed to do whatever you want. And your opponent has had one turn without supporters and then another turn without supporters. And then all of a sudden they're in a bad position and you win the game. It's not an every game kind of card. This is tech. As far as I'm concerned, it's got tech written all over it. But you know what? We've got the perfect deck for this. Because re remember the Roaring Moon that we're going to be getting in Temporal Forces? That Japan got in Wild Force? It does 70 damage plus 10 for each ancient card in your discard pile. So what that means is you can play like one or two of this Scream Tail, and it really doesn't matter because they're just going to be discard fodder to power up your Roaring Moon anyway. Although you can start with them and they're 190 HP and they give up two prizes, bear that in mind. But my point is, if I'm playing a Roaring Moon deck anyway, I can afford to play one or two of these, use it as discard fodder, really cross my fingers I don't start with it, 
But then if my opponent does basically nothing turn one, and then I get to go second, that is a real giveaway that either your opponent's hand is dead, or the only thing they've got is a supporter that they're not allowed to use yet. Well, if you then turn off their ability to use supporters, then either they top deck something on turn two, or their hand remain dead and you win. That's what I'm thinking here. It's a really specific scenario, okay? But if your opponent does almost nothing turn one, either they've got nothing or they're relying on using a support next turn. So use this to make sure they can't use a supporter. I really like this. I'm giving it four wassies. I only like it in that really specific scenario. And if we didn't have a card like Roaring Moon that really wanted to fill the discard pile with random ancient Pokemon anyway, maybe I wouldn't love it so much. But we do. But let's finish off with one more EX. It's another good one. We've got ourselves Iron Thorns EX. And I love this one. Now, once again, I'm not loving the attack, although the 230 HP is great. 220 was really a magic number in the Sword and Shield era. There are a lot of basic EXs with 230 now in Scarlet and Violet. Does make 220 a lot less relevant. The attack is fine. Single Lightning, two colorless, 140. Move an energy from this Pokemon to one of your bench. It's fine. And look, we've got your Maridon. Which, of course, does 40 damage for a single colorless energy. And then attaches two energy from the deck. So you've got that. And, of course, you've got yourself the... Is it Reboot Boss, it's called? The A spec that lets you attach an energy from your discard to each of your future Pokemon. Yeah, Reboot Bot. Literally, of course. That's what it literally says on the card. And, yeah. So we got ways to accelerate the energy. But we've got an ability here, and the ability is what we're worried about. While this Pokemon is in the active spot, Pokemon with a rule box in play, except future Pokemon, don't have any abilities. It is ability lock on rule box Pokemon, but not future. So, you know, your 140 is fine. What you might want to do is build up that 140 using Iron Crown, for instance. Yeah, that's fine. Your ability still works. It's a future Pokemon. Or maybe you want to drop an Iron Leaves and attach a bunch of energy to it and move it in the active to hit 180. That's fine. Because it's a future Pokemon. Or maybe, because it's a Lightning Pokemon, maybe you want to use Maridon. Well, actually, super annoyingly, remember the Maridon from Scarlet and Violet base is technically not a future Pokemon. So you actually can't use that ability to get other Pokemon out if this is in the active that's actually super annoying and we know we've had a future Maraid on the X since which is lovely but it's not actually got the ability so nobody really cares not got an ability at all so that's kind of annoying but actually if we look at the meta game that we're expecting to have when this drops all of a sudden this is kind of relevant Charizard decks are absolutely ruling the format. You know what Charizard really likes to do? Use its ability to accelerate energy to get rolling. It can't. And although Pidgeot isn't the best build of Charizard post-rotation, it's still a very relevant build, but you can't use Pidgeot to quick search and grab any card you like when you've got Iron Fawns in the active because it turns that ability off. Or we could look at stuff like Golden Go. Which, of course, has that really rather lovely ability. Let's it draw extra cards. Makes the deck a lot better. Yeah, that, that, that's not going to work. Not with this in the active. That's going to slow that deck down quite a bit. Or Lugia. Lugia is like legit relevant post-rotation. But it's kind of reliant on its V-Star power to get your Archeops out. Yeah, well, great news. They can't use this when this is in the active. Gardevoir remains relevant, but it kind of needs its ability to accelerate energy. You see where we're going with this. It's not every deck. Uh, Chen Pao searching out energy. There's another one. It's not every deck, okay? But there are enough decks that are very reliant on using rule box abilities that this is going to be good. And it's only rule box abilities, and it's only when it's active, but this could be very, very good. Classic kind of card where you're not necessarily going to make an entire Iron Fawns EX deck. You'll make a future deck, 
but you'll have a couple of these in there. So if you're against a deck that's really reliant on abilities of rule box Pokemon, out comes this. And you are golden. I'm again giving this four Wossies, unlike the EXs that have been revealed today. But I do think this might even be the best. Although I've not given it the highest score, don't think about that too much. For now, tell me what you think about these cards. Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join the Discord, and all kinds of fun things. And get shoutouts on the channel, like the lovely Dojo, who's been a supporter of us for a while now and seems to be a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.